Vancouver or Florida? I don't know, I'd rather choose Florida myself. And that actually turned out to be the case for Roberto Luongo, although a little bit shocked. He did get traded to the Panthers, his home, he does have a home in Boca Raton, I believe. So it was a nice fit. And sure enough, his first game wearing Florida Panther colors, he gets a shutout. And then if you look the other way, Eddie Lack allowed a goal from pretty much center ice a couple nights ago against Calgary and then does it again against the New York Islanders. In fact, he allowed seven goals, so it was atrocious. Things seemed to go bad to worse for Vancouver. Same could be said about Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay has slid a lot, considering they still have Steven Stamkos, who's back now, which should be a good thing, but you know they're trailing down the standings, and I think the fact that they lose Marty St. Louis is really going to hurt them down the stretch. As for the New York Rangers, he got a couple points, so they're happy with that. Out of those two teams, you look at Tampa and the situation they're in without St. Louis. You look at Vancouver with the situation that you don't have Luongo in. Who's worse for where? Vancouver. Right, not even, yeah. Have you, have not you even seen debatable. them play? You know, they gave up seven goals in one period last night. I think Vancouver's in a worse spot as an organization than Edmonton or Calgary. They got, at this time last year, they had two number one goalies. Now they have zero. Ryan Kessler is one of their better players. He's one of their grittier players. He wants out. The only guys who don't want out are the Sedins, and they've got them locked up long term. Well, and you can't even trade the Sedins because you have to trade them together. Like, it's a little freaky that two <laughs> twins want to be together that much that you can only trade them together. You can't trade one at a time. Uh, but Vancouver's going nowhere, nowhere fast. And Their window has to was a few years ago. 2011. Their window's closed. Yeah. They're done. And, and the thing is, Tortorella, shelf life in New York lasted a lot longer than it's lasting in Vancouver. Tortorella is like the little dog that you pick up at the pet store that barks the first few weeks you have it, and you think it's cute for the first few weeks while it's barking. But then it goes in the backyard, and three weeks later, you get a knock on your door from your neighbor saying, would you do something about your dog? Well, that's Tortorella barking the dressing room, and the players get sick of it. And you I know what? I'll say this. Done. If you're the New York Rangers, you're very happy with Alain Vignon going the other oh. way in the switch because you look at where they are considering where Vancouver but, but is. But you go from two different personalities. You go from Tortorella running the Rangers where all he did was bark at his players, game in, practice in, and practice out, where you have Alain Vigneault, who's more of a a comfort zone and, and the guys feel comfortable with him. He's a player coach. So the Rangers are responding to him. Tortorella, I, I think he's done after this season. I think he goes with the GM too. As far as the Tortorella in okay. Vancouver. I was going to actually get to that. You okay. still wanted to talk. No. I do actually do want to get to this real quick. The, the AGM, because I know you have a lot of topics and ideas to change hockey. And I was uh, looking at you and Brandon, this question goes to you. What rule change would you like to see implemented? Because there's a lot of talk about three on three overtime, a lot of talk about maybe even changing the rules in terms of uh, advancing instant replay so that I would call, say, penalties, goalie interference being one of them. What would you like to see change in the NHL next season or maybe the next season after that? I would like to see a change as far as the shootout and the overtime and whatever, but I think the thing with the general managers is there's so many different ideas out there that it's not going to happen anytime soon because some guys are saying it should be three on three, get rid of the shootout altogether. Like there's, you know, they need that consensus and they're so far away. But if I had to pick one change, I think it would be the coach's challenge. I think that would be cool. You know, it worked in football. It works in football. Just a chance for, if a coach disagrees with the call, you have a chance to say, you know what, I want a second look. Say it's a, remember that goal that Matt Duchesne scored against Nashville if you, last year, I think it was, when he was like 12 feet offside and they didn't call it and even he thought he was offside. He scored the game-winning goal. That's the kind of stuff that you can take out of the game, those blunders that the refs and the linesmen miss. The only bad thing about that, what they're, it's going to go against them, is the time frame it takes. You're slowing up the game even further. Uh, they want to package this game together for a good time for viewing audiences. So I, I think the more delays you have in the game, the less it's going to happen. I still think I hate the shootout. I just absolutely despise it. Uh, I've been part of teams in the past where as soon as it hits a shootout, I don't even watch the game. I go in the dressing room and tell me what happens at the end. Uh, I, I just really don't think there's a, the place in the game. I know the fans love it and it's you know, all that and then some, but I, I think it takes away the team atmosphere of what the game well, You don't want to be the team that loses out of playoff spot because of a, a shootout, shootout loss. Yeah. Skills competition, but yeah. what do you do then? What's you, your other option? I, I four guess that's four, what we're going to hear. You do four and four and three on three. If it's still tied, shake hands, let's go home. All right. Well, you know so what? You There's no ties to the in tie. baseball. I want to get to this. There's no ties in baseball. Or basketball. Uh, no, there you go. And maybe they'll have to choose some certain rules out of there. But 
I want to talk about Barry Bonds uh, returning to the major leagues, this time as a hitting coach with the San Francisco Giants. He held a Q&A with the media and seemed actually quite polite. Does this seem like more of a stunt that he's trying to rehabilitate his image and maybe perhaps win over some voters and get into the Hall of Fame? I don't think seven days of being at spring training is totally going to change his 20-year career or whatever he had, you know? But he says he's changed. The baseball player that you had back then is different from the Barry Bonds that we see here. It Not still doesn't change the record books. Too as well. He still cheated the game. Well, I, you don't know that for but, sure. But his circumstances have changed, He too. was just a jerk or a yeah. certified a-hole. <laughs> well, Let's just be honest. But, but, but circumstances have changed from his playing days to now. When he was during his playing days, he was a target for the media. And, and, he, and he didn't really do himself any justice either by the way that he answered to the media. And he didn't like getting questioned by the media day after day after day as a player. So things are changed now. They're not going to be grilling him as much as they are now uh, as, a, as, a, I guess, a guest coach at training camp. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it has it done a lot to, to maybe help his reputation. Uh, probably not. Very quickly, Toronto Blue Jays. We'll get to them and Irvin Santana. Still available on the market, and we'll see what happens in a matter of hours or days. But, guys, why shouldn't the Blue Jays pick up Irvin Santana? There's a lot of talk. Why? Why shouldn't they? Well, for the right price. It has to be the right price. For, he's asking, was it $7 million, $10 million, whatever it is. He is a 500 pitcher. He might be member three, maybe two. He eats up a lot of innings. He'd be he great for the middle of the rotation. Yeah, it has to be the right price, and, and to say that, the Blue Jays pitching staff needs something. Uh, if he's number two or three in the rotation, I don't think that's he'd not be two. Deal. He wouldn't be two, would he? He'd, he'd be three. He'd, he'd be, be three. three. And then you look at a guy like Brandon Morrow, who has had good years. You never know. He could be your number three. Santana could be your number four. Like you never know, because you got R. A. Dickey and Mark Burley, and then Morrow's a pretty. But good Morrow's pitcher. a Band-Aid. Yeah. Well, he was injured last year. He's Doesn't been mean he's a lot of his have, career. You don't he hasn't pitched over 180 innings. But Santana has been a 500 pitcher for the last four years. Yeah, but he could eat and, up a lot of innings. Yeah, and, and, That's and, the thing. And you I need know, somebody who could eat up a lot of innings. I, I think they team. should try and get him. I'm just trying to come up with a reason why they shouldn't. It's, it's kind of hard, especially when you look at AA and the situation they're in, plus Baltimore also in the mix. You're already getting Ubaldo. If they add Urban Santana, they, pretty got a, or they have a pretty good rotation to begin with. We're going to have to take a quick timeout, though, guys. When we return, we have over-under and see how these two will do next.